Alright, what is going on YouTube? Welcome to a 1v1 game in between Doubt and Nusho Bear. Nush coming in from an Age from Paris free background and he does have Chinese down south in red versus the Holy Roman Empire of Doubt in blue. So, on Boulder Bay, no French mirrors. This is going to be interesting no matter what, I'm not gonna lie, because for the last one month we have just been seeing French mirrors on this map. So, I'm very very pleased that we'll see a different civilization matchup going on here. So, after the French, the Holy Roman Empire seems to be the second best civilization on this map. You have a very powerful early game economy with the Prelate, and uh, you can just translate that into a very nice feudal age timing, get quite a lot of fishing ships out as well in the process, and then just try to play aggressive, try to sink the opponent's fishing eco. And behind this one, the core concept is that you do have the prelates boosting your wood income, so you should be able to outmuscle your opponent when it comes to ship numbers, secure water, and then just use that fish to get to castle age. And once you get to castle age, start picking up relics with the prelates, garrison them into the Ragnis Cathedral, and just build your lead even further. Meanwhile, on the other side, Chinese can be an intriguing civilization for many reasons. It's very, very flexible. If you boost your... Uh, drop off of wood at the lumber camp with the imperial officer that could be a pretty interesting approach to take but we will see if uh, Nush does that so far it seems that he is just uh, playing with uh, one villager being sent forward for fishing and that's basically it he does have his scout nearby so doubt can't really harass him and now there's a second villager coming out i like this decision so if you only have one villager over here doubt can harass this villager potentially even kill it two villagers can be killed that easily because the villagers will be able to fight back together so when you're sending a villager out like this you probably prefer to have two over there you already see one fishing ship out in fact the second fishing ship out already for nush whereas for doubt this is only fishing ship number one coming out for him you see that uh, he was floating quite a lot of wood at the beginning so Turns out that this dock was a little late, but the reason why he was floating so much wood is because he wants to go for a second dock immediately, so this is not something that's very conventional. Usually you make your second dock as you're going up to feudal age, so you can produce more ships. Looks like what Doubt is doing here is that he's delaying his fishing ships a tiny bit in the favor of adding a second dock, so he can just pump out fishing ships from two docks. Not sure if this is actually going to be worth it at the beginning, but in the long run it probably does. Doubt will probably prioritize the fishing eco quite a bit. And you see he's microing his prelate in between his wood line and the food villagers. He kind of needs to boost these uh, villagers on the food right now, because that's basically his only food source until these fishing ships start dropping off the food. So, in order to produce villagers consistently, he needs these to work at maximum efficiency. Meanwhile, on the other side... You already have four fishing ships out for uh, Nushal Bear, as he's already on gold. Doubt has started sending villagers to gold as well, so we're progressing towards Feudal Age. So let's talk about the map over here. We do have one relic close to each player's base, as we do have a scout coming in here from Nushal Bear. This is what I was talking about. One scout can harass a villager so, so nicely over here. If you have a second scout, or a second villager here... That should be enough to push away a scout. Two villagers should be able to fight back against one scout. But one won't be sufficient. So Doubt will be forced off from the shorefish, which is annoying. Because not only are you benefiting from deep fishing with your fishing ships. You're also benefiting from these villagers taking shorefish. So right now Nushal Bear's food income should be way better. You see, it's about 400 food per minute. As opposed to just 200 from Doubt. Doubt's got more food income. So, the idea here is that Doubt will make up for this lower food economy right now by adding more fishing ships. But I feel like Nushal Bear has caught the start a little bit better. And you see, he is already planning to go up to Feudal Age over here. Pretty heavy on gold he is. And he should drop probably the Barbican of the Sun. And, oh, I like this. Barbican of the Sun, but it's dropped close to the dock. What this means is that it's going to support with some musket fire around this area. Which means it's going to be a little more difficult for Doubt to destroy this dock. Now the drawback of this Barbican of the Sun over here is that you only have two villagers building it. Which is not a whole lot on such a map. On this map you probably want four or so villagers building your landmark. Simply because you want to get to Feudal Age as fast as possible. So you can get that first junk or galley out depending on which civilization you are. And I would expect Doubt to build that Feudal Age landmark with more villagers. Possibly three, four... Maybe even five. So as things stand, 
If you look at economies, it's 28 for Mr. Doubt. For Nush, it is 27. So this is the time where Doubt is taking over now, thanks to the two docks working for him. Both players taking deep fish as they should, and you see that Nush Lobir is going to play this one safely, just walling himself up, making sure that Doubt can't surprise him with any kind of land aggression. So one thing I want to say is that both players have one relic close to their base, and we sort of have three relics in this uh, uncontested area in the middle, but they seem to be better positioned for Nushal Bear. Two of them are rather close to his side. So Doubt is going to have to work for those relics for his Ragnitz Cathedral. As you see, he is going up with four villagers. Not necessarily the biggest fan of this uh, Aachen Chapel over here, unless Doubt pulls all the villagers to this food line, which he does. In this case, I like it because you're boosting your food income close to your TC here. You're boosting your wood income and your gold income with it. If Doubt stayed on this wood line here, I wouldn't like that Aachen Chapel because wood is a serious bottleneck when it comes to ship production because your ships are pretty wood heavy as well. So if you are playing HRE on this map, you probably want to have your wood income boosted by the Aachen Chapel as well as your gold income. So it's a good decision from Doubt, I believe, that he repositioned his wood line over here on the left side so he can pretty much boost his entire economy with the Aachen Chapel once it's finished. Speaking of stuff being finished though, Nushal Bear is already up to Feudal Agent, he has a junk out, so Doubt is going to be forced away from his deep fish for a moment. He can garrison the docks for some safety, and I don't think that he will lose a lot of fishing ships here. He can also repair his own ships with the other fishing ships out here, but the fact that his fishing eco is idle is already sort of an advantage over here for Nush. Now, here comes Doubt to retaliate, and that villager was sent out alone. So there's a small chance that Doubt gets the villager kill here. It's gonna be difficult because there's a scout coming in as well for Nush and the villager is getting close to the TC, so Doubt will withdraw. And now Doubt has his scout trapped in here, so Nush could just take this fight and uh, if he pulls a villager even to fight this, should be able to win against Doubt. Meanwhile on the water, as I said, Nushal Bear isn't really able to take down those ships simply because they're being repaired by the dock and they could be repaired by nearby fishing ships as well. Although, as I'm saying that, he's going to lose the first one. I'm looking at Doubt. He is up to Feudal Age, but there is uh, absolutely no galleys coming in. And now that I'm looking at this, this isn't even a uh, fast Feudal build here for ships. He's going fast castle. Look at those resources. It's not a bad idea. He knows that he's going to lose his fishing eco. It's a little sloppy from Doubt that he didn't garrison three fishing ships into each dock. Because this way he would be guaranteed to keep six fishing ships alive. Like you see, he still has six, but I don't think that these can get into the docks. So I would have preferred Doubt garrisoning those. So he can pop them out once water is safe. But the idea here for Doubt is that the fishing eco is expendable. Because he will get to Castle Age. He will get the Ragnitz Cathedral, start picking up the relics. And the bigger deal is that he will have Hawks. And... The thing is that the arrow ships like Junks, they don't do well against docks. This is the difference between a non-French civilization on water and French. If you were up against French, this would be GG, because you would lose water. The French Hawks would destroy these docks so fast because they have a lot of firepower against them. But you see, Junks are barely doing anything. So, Nushal Bear basically has no chance to destroy these docks before Doubt can get some Hawks out. And those Hawks will destroy the Junks, secure water control for Doubt. And then Doubt will rebuild his fishing eco. That's probably the game plan here for our blue player. Meanwhile, you see Doubt already moving out with that prelate for the relic. He has to be careful not to get that prelate sniped by the junk, as Doubt pretty much lost all his fishing eco. But uh, now that he is in a castle age, I would expect those hawks to start popping out for him. He's a little low on resources. And the thing is that... That castle age wasn't that suitable for Doubt, because behind this one, Nushal Bear had an untouched fishing eco. So, as much as Doubt was able to fast castle with the Aachen Chapel boosting his eco and having quite a lot of fishing ships, his opponent also had a good fishing eco, so he was able to get to castle age rather fast as well. So, looks like Doubt might not be able to take water back, and it kind of seems like he's going to start adding some hawks. But by the time he adds the Hawks, his opponent can go for War Junks. So once again, water is going to be even here. It is two docks right now for Mr. Nushal Bear, as the first War Junk is out. Let's compare War Junks to Hawks, because that's an interesting talking point. So 
the Hulks have uh, 1000 HP, War Junks only have uh, 900, but War Junks have 120 Ballista damage. If my calculations are correct, it doesn't actually take the 6 armor into account, but a War Junk roughly needs uh, 6, 8... No, it needs 9 shots to destroy a Hulk, and a Hulk needs, uh, I think, 10 if you actually count the armor, so... The War Junks might actually be slightly more powerful than Hawks, but it's a rather close matchup um, right now. The War Junks actually open a little bit better over here, though, for Nusha Bear. Remember that behind this one, he's got an operational fishing eco, so his economy is probably better, but Doubt is already coming forward, and he is picking up relics. Two relics already coming in for him, and there's a third one here, so he should have the Ragnitz Cathedral maxed out. Doubt getting a market up and selling a lot of food, and look at Doubt's food count. How on the earth does he have this much food eco when he lost his fishing eco already? It's ridiculous, and Doubt is going for a fast imp. Doubt has the shepherds boosted by the Aachen Chapel as well. So it's possible that the fishing eco plus the Aachen Chapel boosting those villagers is actually um, something that is enough to boost you to like 2000 food. And this is going to be a whopping 12 minutes or so fast imperial by Doubt. That's impressive. And... It's not like Nusho Bear misplayed this. He got water control, capitalized on it, or capitalized on it with the fishing eco. So Nusho Bear did everything right. It's just Doubt Build being kind of crazy over here, I'm not gonna lie. Um, he is going to have free relics in the Ragnitz Cathedral. And the thing is that he's gonna have more relics than that. He's gonna have a fourth one here that he could utilize either in a monastery or he could garrison it into a dock to increase the attack rate of his ships. Doubt is aging up with the Palace of Schwabia, which is a landmark that allows fast imperial builds to be very successful you can train villagers in five seconds for 12 food insanely good for booming and this is what justifies the fast imp here for doubt his economy currently isn't powerful we're talking about 42 eco as opposed to nusha bears 51 but that difference can be just reduced very fast here for doubt because that pass of Schwabia is just spamming villagers out like crazy. And of course you got the um, Ragnitz Cathedral working for you as well. Looks like Doubt is just going to make a monastery. So he doesn't really want to boost his docks. In fact, we're not even going to see any kind of naval warfare here by Doubt. His opponent, by the way, um, has the second landmark as well for Feudal Age. So currently we're talking about the Song Dynasty for Nusho Bear. And he's got the Clock Tower as well. And the thing is that Nusho Bear had the fishing eco the whole game completely untouched, so he's not that far behind when it comes to Imperial Ages. He's also gonna have about a 14 minutes-ish Imperial. Probably going up with the Spirit Way. Um, Barracks coming out right now. I love how he's spreading out his ships. He is going to control the shoreline, so he knows exactly if Doubt wants to redock. And as long as Doubt is not redocking, his fishing eco is safe. So the only thing I would actually say to Nusho Bear is that it would make sense to try and add some tra or uh, trade ships. Trade ships on this map are very powerful because the travel distance is pretty long and they will bring you both gold and wood. They return their price so, so fast, like one or two turns. So if you have water control like this one, trade ships is the way to go on Boulder Bay. Doubt had a forward mining operation over here that will be tower rushed by Nusha Bear. Doubt wasn't really worried about that one. He just pulls away the villagers and that's it. So... We're seeing a Spearman coming in for Noosh as he's almost up to Imperial. What is Doubt up to? Looks like he's just booming. He's currently at 66 eco. Noosh Bear is at 59. So Doubt already took over as uh, Noosh is using a villager to neutralize that sacred site. Remember that Doubt also has the Ragnis Cathedral with three relics plus the monastery with one. So that's 1000 gold per minute just from the relics. That's insane. That's an insane amount of gold income. And uh, honestly, Nusho Bear really needs the trade to compensate for that because 1000 gold per minute is very difficult to compensate uh, for using only villagers. Doubt is now starting to add farming eco. You probably want your farming eco to be around the Aachen Chapel for the same purposes as uh, you just want all your economy to be in the influence radius of the Aachen Chapel. They will boost the resource income there quite nicely. It looks like Doubt is secure in the corner though. Notice that he's trying to cut off Nusho Bear from the land trade. Because there's basically three ways to obtain gold once all the mineable gold is gone. 
you either have relics, you trade with this coastal trade post, or you trade with this land trade post. And oh, doubt is going for a lunch connector. Not a unit that you see every day. So let's talk about these bad boys. These are pretty expensive. 650 food, 100 gold is not cheap. Especially for a unit that has 95 base HP. So rather low health for this unit. For such an expensive unit, that's a problem. On the other hand, this is the ultimate damage dealing unit. Because it has a huge damage output and it does area damage. So it is uh, very, very good against clustered up units. And... It's in general good against any kind of infantry, but especially against spearmen, they will work out very nicely. What you need against them is archers, potentially Jungenu would be a very good uh, upgrade or unit to add here for Nush. He's in the Song Dynasty, so Jungenu, the newly buffed Jungenu would work fine. These are considered light infantry units, so you see it's called light infantry here, which means that crossbows don't work well against them. The men at arms die to crossbowmen, but uh, these guys... They are countered by archers, not crossbows. Looks like Nushal Bear is not adding any trade, uh, which is a little disappointing. As I said, you can really capitalize on that water control with trade. I feel like uh, the naval trade on this map, once you have the water control, will become a meta in the next uh, two or so months. We just need a tournament which showcases players how powerful it is. We had this in the Winner Stays On series, Marine Lord versus Probe, I believe. Where it really was showcased how powerful the naval trade could be. Looks like we're going to have stone walls coming in. For Nushal Bear. Currently sitting at 90 villagers for doubt. 71 eco only for Nush. Including fish. So Nush actually has a weaker economy right now. And doubt has an outpost here with a cannon emplacement. So if that takes down the ships. There is a chance for doubt to start redocking. Here come the infantry. Let's take a look at the upgrades for Doubt here real quickly. Does he have a blacksmith? He actually has two blacksmiths. Just going for the marching derails and infantry siege upgrade. So he wants to start popping out ramps. And of course he wants to get that movement speed bonus for his infantry. The men at arms would benefit from both of these upgrades. So heavy mace and 200 weapons. But it's most Landsknechte. Only a handful of men at arms are mixed in. So you probably don't prioritize those upgrades that much. A couple of spring loads out for Nush. These actually do quite a lot of damage against the Landsknechte, but probably the unit that you want here is a Nest of Bees. Because the Nest of Bees is great when it comes to doing damage to a lot of massed units. And you see these guys are lightly armored, so the Nest of Bees would do a whole lot against them. Spearman, however, will die to them. I'm not sure if... Oh yeah, look at that. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about out there. The Spearman just evaporating through the Lundsknechte. Now, Nush will still win this fight because he's got the ships shooting, he's got the Springles shooting, and as I said, the Lundsknechte are pretty fragile. But you see the potential of these units, and I'm fairly certain the reason why they're made so fragile by the developers is because if they were a little more tanky, they would just be the go-to unit in every situation. That area damage is something that can be devastating. Um, doubt coming with the redocking and it looks like we're going to see that all important explosives upgrade coming in for him that dock will be delayed because the war junk snipes the villager but here's the deal explosives is an upgrade that is going to give you a massive attack boost to your demo ships it's borderline broken right now it's an upgrade that's going to turn your demo ships into nuclear torpedoes pretty much so we have seen such an increase in the damage output which also sort of materializes in a range increase that it's very very easy to sink entire fleets with just one or two demo ships the difference between a standard demo ship and a one with explosives is enormous doubt capturing the sacred site over here as he does take down the tower over here docks will also be taken down you see now nush is scrambling to fight this one and he also has a couple of junks which do technically counter the incendiary ships, so you see that they have bonus damage. But it depends on how fast you can react to them. Because the thing is that these ships will still die to the demos, and they don't have a huge amount of bonus damage against them. Sure enough, they do a lot, but if they don't kill it in the first volley, they are dead. And there is the first demo coming from Doubt. Say goodbye to that fleet, Nush, because that is going down. Doubt. It's romantic and everything, but come on. <laughs> Oh, doubt. Oh, doubt. He could have sunk that entire fleet and now he's gonna lose the demos. 
what a disappointment. What a disappointment it was. And I mean, look at this. The galley shoots the demo, and it still damaged this ship even. It's ridiculous. The range on this is so big that at maximum range for that junk, it kills the demo and it still damages this ship. It's completely broken right now. The other junk also went down. Doubt not really adding a lot more demos right now. Looks like he's given up on that as uh, Noosh is pushing up with a couple of Springholds. He's a little slow to react to those Lunt Snack there, so he might actually lose one of those. But it looks like he's going to be able to keep it alive. Doubt still has the Sacred Sight as Noosh already stonewalled this side. Still no trade whatsoever as Doubt is crawling up with the Bombards. Now the thing is that the Bombards for the HRE won't have uh, the quality... Of the Chinese Bombards. The Chinese Bombards from the Clock Tower will have more HP. And they will have more range as well. So this is going to be difficult for Doubt to fight. Looking at the Ecos, it's 97 for Noosh. And Doubt is at 110. But Doubt only has uh, 24 army. And Noosh Bear is up to 66. So Noosh's army is much larger. Is it a lot more convincing? I'm not 100% sure. Because a lot of that is Spearmen that will just die to Lundsnechte. But the size is definitely bigger here for Noosh. He hasn't picked this relic up here. Something that could help a tiny bit with gold income. As we got some explosive junks coming in here as well for Noosh Bear. It's basically a kamikaze strike against those docks. And as I said, those demos turn into nuclear torpedoes with the explosives upgrade. There was also a nice demo connection here by Doubt sinking, I think, two vessels or so. But the demos with the explosives are so powerful that you can actually use them against buildings. So... I think the range on them is so big that if you just delete 5, 6, 7 demos here, they might be able to take down the keep. So, looking at those Bombards, they do not have the range upgrade just yet for a Chinese player, but you see it's 860 HP as opposed to 576. So the quality advantage is already over there for Noosh. Doubt is going to get quite a lot of kills with those uh, Lance Connector. You see all those red dead bodies out there, mostly Spearmen. But the palace guards will slowly clean them up. And now Nusha Bear is pushing for the corner. Doubt getting some more bombards out as we're seeing elite mantrams being added by Doubt. That's a good decision. So the thing is that the Holy Roman Empire men at arms are way better than the palace guards. In general, the Holy Roman Empire men at arms with the heavy maces and the um, double handed weapons upgrade, they're able to destroy other men at arms very easily. But especially the Palace Guards, which have lower armor but higher mobility, they will die to the Holy Roman Men at Arms very, very easily. 200 weapons not being tagged into yet by Doubt. I wonder if this is intentional. Because back in the previous patch, if you get the 200 weapons upgrade, it increases your base damage, but you lose your plus 6 heavy bonus damage, and it gets reduced to plus 3. It was a bug, but it was fixed for now, so... Now, if you get the 200 weapons, you will go up to 22 base damage, and you will have a plus 6 against heavy. So, there's absolutely no reason not to get the 200 weapons upgrade now for Doubt. But, since he's been pretty active, preparing for King of the Desert, so he wasn't really playing a lot of AoE 4, I would expect him to potentially miss the patch notes, so he might not know that now this bug is fixed, and uh, 200 weapons are now always viable. Doubt is losing a lot of production over here, trying to mass an army that's uh, capable of taking a decisive fight. The problem that he has is that his numbers are still not very impressive. So, has quite a lot of elite men at arms, but on the other side, huge amount of palace guards out there, spring oats, cannons, so I'm not sure if Doubt can take the fight with this army right now. The palace guards don't have the elite upgrade, by the way, so these are still castle age units. The bigger problem for Doubt right now is the siege. His own spring oats are crawling up, trying to snipe the cannon. I think the Men-at-Arms will actually be able to take down most of the Palace Guards here, but I think Noosh will be able to retain his Siege. Uh, let's see how much those uh, Men-at-Arms do. Yeah, it looks like the support fire from the Spring Olds, the Cannon, and even the Tower, that should be enough to clean up most of those Men-at-Arms from Doubt. Despite the fact that, as I said, these are Castle Age Palace Guards, and Noosh is pushing towards this corner trying to secure it, Doubt is in trouble here. He is in trouble because uh, he is losing control over that corner, which will also mean that uh, he is gonna have no chance to trade. No water control, no land control, so the only way that he's getting gold is with the Ragnates Cathedral. 
Now, he has four relics, three of them in the Ragnates Cathedral, so that's a lot of gold income still. But I feel like the word that describes the situation of the game right now is momentum. Neutral Bear has an insane amount of momentum, four Bombards being set up, still missing the range upgrade though. The castle goes down over here for Doubt, so now his production buildings are once again wide open for destruction as uh, Doubt is scrambling to rebuild his production as fast as possible. It looks like there is no sign of Doubt going back on water, whereas there is absolutely no sign of Neutral Bear initiating any kind of trade for himself. Looks like University is in for Nush, so he's probably um, just finished with the range upgrade on those cannons. I'll have to check, but yeah, that upgrade just finished. So now, the problem for Doubt, as I said, is that he's just constantly losing the production buildings. He's losing them faster than he can rebuild them. Nusho Bear is kept at 200 population with 72 army, whereas for Doubt, it's only 13 army. Those numbers aren't looking good for Doubt at all. So, you see that Nusho Bear is fortifying the locations that he has control of now, so... He's gonna stonewall himself, and I like that, to be honest, because even if Doubt is able to take a good fight, if you got multiple layers of stonewalls over here, you can sort of slow down a counterattack by Doubt. So, you sort of give yourself a chance to react in case something goes di disastrously bad here for Nushal Bear. Four mana terms now for Doubt, he now has gotten the two-handed weapons upgrade as well. So, he's got the fully maxed out elite man at arms. The problem for him, as I said, is the spring bolt slash the cannons. If he can mass enough men at arms, that won't matter, but the big problem right now is uh, taking down those spring bolts. Best thing he could do is get culverines that are being repaired by villagers. Because the culverines one shot spring bolts. And this many spring bolts will be able to do a lot of damage to those culverines, but if you have repair villagers, you can keep those alive and just keep taking down those uh, spring bolts. Spring bolts have 12 range right now, so they already have the roller shutters. Doubt also has roller shutters on his own spring bolts, but no culverines. Looks like the cannon will be taken down quite easily over here. Meanwhile, um, Doubt's got a keep along the shoreline, so those uh, junks can't really do that much of a harassment. And Doubt is actually redocking. So, I guess Doubt is going to start going for water a little more aggressively. We'll have to take a look at that. Once again, just playing patiently. Knows exactly that he's losing ground, he's losing production buildings as uh, his former base becomes just a big rubble. But he's patient, and that's now 38 elite men-at-arms, supported by 15 spring golds. And if you look at uh, Nusha Bear, he still doesn't have the Imperial Age upgrade for those uh, palace guards. He's got uh, currently 8 spring golds on the battlefield. This is a fight that Doubt could potentially take very soon. And this could be a very, very punishing fight. Also notice that this is open here, so even if Nushal Bear has this wall intact, Doubt can just avoid that and go through here if he really wants to. There's multiple keeps in this corner as well, so it's not going to be an easy counterattack for Doubt. But speaking of a counterattack, here it goes. And you see Nushal Bear realizes what's going on. He's like, oh shoot, we're in trouble because those men at arms will just absolutely slaughter all those palace guards. There's a bit of a traffic jam here as well, as the red units are scrambling to run away. There is a Spring Golden placement coming in on this keep, and you already have Boiling Oil, so there is going to be some shelter to be found over here for Nushal Bear. Doubt doesn't have any cannon to take that keep down with, so as I said, a bit of a buffer is here for Nush, but this was a massive win there for Doubt. He just needs to make sure he doesn't lose his men at arms though, because that Boiling Oil is a big difference maker, and you see... The men arms are doing a lot of damage to that key, but those are expensive units here for Doubt, and he's just losing them so easily to the Boiling Oil, they're already half dead. And the next patch of Boiling Oil is just going to smash them in the face. Doubt could really benefit from two Bombards right now, but it's a full Spring Old army for him. We're talking about 21 Spring Olds here for Mr. Doubt. Behind this one, Doubt is already sending in some demolition ships, so he's going for Fishing Eco. While his opponent is distracted, another batch of Boiling Oil is out, and you see... All those men arms disappeared because of the boiling oil, and the castle is still intact. Now Doubt is crawling up with the bombards though, and it looks like the infantry is sufficient. You're looking at the resource income permit, it's actually better for Doubt. He's at 91 eco right now. His opponent, Nusha Bear, is at 124. But Doubt's got that Ragnitz Cathedral working for him, and now the demos are coming in to destroy the docks, destroy the Barbican of the Sun over there. 
Doubt taking on the first keep and now he's got firepower to break through those walls but doesn't even need him. Because look at this, he's just walking through here, although the gate is going to crumble in a moment. Next keep up here, another keep coming in for Nusha Bear, but the cannons should make a quick work with that. Doubt still has quite a lot of demos out here. Also a lot of demos coming in for Nusha Bear, but what can he do with all those demo ships when he's getting pushed back on the land? Nush still has a couple of cannon, but if you look at the army numbers, I'm not impressed anymore. 24 army only, and Doubt's got insane firepower now. Four bombards supported by dozens of Springolds, and this isn't even a huge amount of Springolds now for Doubt. He used to have more than this. Another keep coming in for Doubt, as the demos are trying to take the castle down. <laughs> Valiant effort by Nush, but that's a little bit outside the range of those demos. I'm not even sure what he could have accomplished by destroying that castle, but I sort of get what the idea was. I don't really think it was a legitimate thing to try and destroy that, but it is what it is. More bombards are on the way for our Rettler, and now we're talking about the fact that, as I said, these are Castle Age Palace Guards. Against the single best anti-infantry unit of the game for the Hold Roman Empire. It's very, very difficult to find anything uh, from the barracks that's better than destroying opponent's infantry than the Holy Roman Empire men at arms. Does have a bonus damage against the heavy infantry of the opponent, very very resistant uh, to attacks as well of course, and they also have a bonus damage uh, on their base attack. So the HRE men at arms is no joke, it's just going to annihilate all the infantry. What Nush could use is potentially hand cannoneers, but the thing is that with that many cannon around for doubt, he can just press on with this momentum and the patience is paying off here for doubt he has been patient he's been waiting to mass army knew exactly that he can't take a fight before he's ready but once he has a big enough force of men at arms it no longer matters that nusha bear has like 10 springles on the battlefield because you can just overrun it and those are fully upgraded imperial age men at arms from the hre they will just annihilate all those palace guards you see the palace guards are barely killing anything i don't see any dead blue bodies out there it's all red that's that. Meanwhile, for Doubt, looks like he sort of has given up on the water, although he landed some demos in here, so the Barbican of the Sun was destroyed, docks were taken down. But now, Doubt is focusing all in on this push here, as uh, the walls are now being repaired by Nusha Bear, but let's be honest, the demo, or uh, not even demo, but the cannon can just blast their way through the walls. Technically, demo ships could work as well. A couple of demos breaking that wall is completely legitimate as an idea for doubt. But he's got an easier way of doing that. Just blast his way through the walls with those cannon. All the forward from Nusha Bear has been cleaned up. And now doubt is in firm control over this game. Nusha Bear is floating 11,000 wood right now. He's got quite a lot of resources, but no gold. And this is why I said that lack of trade actually hurts really badly here for him. Imagine that he had 20 trade cards set up for the entire game. He would have had probably 10,000 extra gold compared to what he had in this game. And that lack of gold is now hurting him quite badly. You see, he's got basically no gold income. No trade, he's got one relic, and that's it. In fact, that relic... Or oh, he tries to get a conversion. I think that's the plan. He's probably gonna try to snipe the siege weapons and then try to get a conversion on the men at arms. It's now or never for him. That monk falls the game is over so he's gonna have to pull that monk try to get a conversion on the man at arms trying to get some scouts out oh that's pure desperation you see if the scouts take down all the siege the monk can potentially get a conversion but even that might not be sufficient simply because nusha bear does not have the economy to win this battle the lack of gold is an issue and as much as nusha bear had momentum in mid game it just disappeared the momentum disappeared by that beautiful counterattack by Doubt, and suddenly Nusha Bear found himself without any kind of gold. He depleted all the gold mines inside his base, and there was just uh, no access to the golds on the left side of the map. This is why, if you win water on this map, you gotta capitalize on that, not just with the fishing eco, but also with the trading. And that could have been a situation for Nusha Bear. You see, Doubt actually took over in villager count for the first half of the game, I would say. That's the power of the Pass of Schwabia you're seeing out there. But the bigger deal is this one. 43,000 gold for Doubt. Of course, some of that comes from relics uh, in the Regnitz Cathedral. But 
Nushko Bear was cut off from gold for the last solid 5-6 minutes of the game, and that shows in this count. In general, Doubt's economy is a lot more efficient, there is no surprise about that one, that's the Holy Roman Empire economy, of course. But that gold discrepancy is enormous. KD is actually in the favor of Nushko Bear. Doubt was taking some very inefficient fights at the beginning, but of course... Uh, the economy advantage for Doubt was so great that he could just overrun his opponent with units. And you see, for the majority of the game, Doubt was just behind so badly in numbers. At some points in the game, we were talking about 65 army against like 10. But then, Doubt was able to patiently build up, and this is the key. Patience. He didn't fight here, he didn't fight here. He waited until he had a big enough mass to take one decisive fight, and then just use that uh, win over there, capitalize on it, and snowball the game, use your momentum to cut your opponent off from key resources like gold and finish the game off.